What's up? Good morning, America. How are you? Don't you know me? I'm your native son. Uh, what's that song? I can't even begin to figure that out while I'm listening to Led Zeppelin, which I've been doing all morning. And you should, too, if you know what's good for you. Let me tell you a quick story, and then we're going to jump into yoga, the Stronger Primary Series. You're going to love it. Use this one as sort of a benchmark, something to always come back to if you need to relay that foundation of your yoga practice. So I'm on, I'm on Broadway in Denver, Colorado. There's all, there's, it's a very busy street. There's a lot of people that walk by. So every morning there's this guy and he's a friend of mine. I've never met him. And I don't know his name, but he's a friend of mine. Because I just look at that guy and I was like, I like that guy. I like that guy and I know he'd like me. Who wouldn't, right? So, remember that. If, the, if it keeps on raining, the levee's going to break. Now, back to the story. If, if you like your yoga, like, just come into child's pose. Like, I'm sorry. To get to really good yoga, you're going to have to deal with some, some fractured and incomplete thoughts and some profanity. Anyway, Gary, Gary's probably 75 years old, and every day he's, he's walking by with a stroller, and in the stroller is Tyler. I don't know if that's his name, but that's what I call him. So Gary and Tyler are always walking by, and Gary is a 75-year-old dude, and he just looks like he's in really great shape, and he's taking his, what appears to be his grandchild uh, for a walk. And so when I look at Gary and I, I see this guy that's just like, just kind of strolling along uh, with a kid, with a little bit of baby that he's taking care of, I'm thinking to myself, that's a guy that takes care of himself. That's what a guy looks like that takes care of himself. So if there's any great pitch for yoga, it's this, is that you may not realize it at 22 or 35, but your body is slowly breaking down. It's starting to age and things are starting to go wrong and things are starting to get sore. That is if we're not maintaining this meat vehicle that we live in. Now, that's not all that yoga is about. It's not just about body maintenance, but it is an essential component of this practice and there's, there's no getting around that, right? That's why it was created, so that people could feel more comfortable in their body. So, how does Led Zeppelin fit into all this? Well, if it keeps on raining, the levee's going to break. That means if we just keep... Rain is beautiful, okay? Let's equate that right now to me and my, my obsession with Animal Crossing, this little Nintendo game, right? I love it. It's like I love rain, and if I do nothing but play Animal Crossing, and I've, I've reached a very, you know, questionable point sometimes, but then things are going to start going wrong because all I'm doing is, is sitting on my ass and the only thing I'm using is my thumbs, right? So it, you can make that rain whatever it is. Rain is anything that we enjoy, but way too much of it, and the levee's going to break. Let's do some yoga, everybody. How are you guys? It's never a bad idea to have a yoga block or a towel. Uh, <laughs> You thought I was going to do that again, didn't you? Yeah, I did too. I thought I was going to forget to turn on the mic. My mic is on, right? Step your feet nice and wide apart. And if you'd like, plop that screen somewhere near the long edge of your mat. Because as we flow, so much of our practice depends on our ability to perceive and see what's going on at any given time. So step your feet nice and wide apart. 
and then just bend one knee at a time and move around. This is, you know what we're doing? We're building the levee because we're not getting younger. And like I said, somebody that's, that's 22, I remember at 22, nobody could, could convince me to take care of myself and try to put into my mind the idea, go ahead and bend that right knee, turn the foot out, that I was gonna age and my body would start to get sore and, and hurt and that I would have to work harder and harder to take care of it as I got older. Nobody told me that. Turn your right foot in, turn your left foot out, and bend your knee. So what we want to do is get to the Stronger Primary Series to make ourselves stronger. But we need to create some dynamic movement, so we're going to do sort of a hybrid of dynamic movement and a salutation. Turn that left foot in. Bind your hands behind your butt like this. And then bow forward. And lift those palms. Bow your heart, bend your knees. Our soul inhabits the greatest vehicle ever created. Part animal, part machine, as Henry Rollins would say. Place your hands on your thighs and push your chest away from the floor and slowly rise up to standing. Take that right foot and turn it out again. Reach your hands above your head and press your palms together. And then as your arms come down, bend your right knee and place your hands on your low back. And it sort of looks like a soldier standing at attention. I'm going to turn around real quick. So you've got your hands on your, uh, right on your sacrum there. Which side am I doing? I'm lost. And then bend your right knee and push your sacrum against your hands and your hands against your sacrum. And if your butt goes back and your hands go into your sacrum, your chest goes forward, your butt goes back. Okay? Straighten your right leg, reach up, and press your palms together over your head like you were squishing an egg in your palms. And then bring your arms down, bend the elbows, and place your hands on your back and push your sacrum against your hands. Let's speed that up. Inhale, reach up, press your palms together. Exhale, bend your knee, place your hands behind you and push and push against. Inhale, rise, push your hands together. Exhale, bend your knee and push your hands into your sacrum. Inhale, one more time. Exhale. And release. Turn that right foot in and turn your left foot out. Reach your hands above your head, push your palms together. Exhale, bend your knee, place your hands on your sacrum, and push your sacrum against the back of your hands. Inhale, push. Exhale, push. Your elbows and your butt go back, and your chest goes forward. Inhale. Exhale. One more. Exhale. Good. Turn that left foot in. And take your hands and place them behind your head. Bring your heels in slightly. Lift your elbows. And try to push your heart to the front of your chest with your spine. And then pull your armpits away from wherever you're looking so that your shoulder blades are coming onto your back, creating a shelf for your heart. And release. Bring your hands down to the floor. And let's take those feet just a little bit wider and bend one knee at a time and just a little bit of more organic dynamic movement. And then we'll go through a specific salutation pattern. All right, turn to your left foot, plant your hands and step your left foot back. Lower your chest to the floor and then lift your chest off the floor into a cobra pose. Lower your chest, pull your belly off the floor. Notice when my chest went down, it was like a rocking chair. When my chest goes down, my groin goes up, and then we push. Press back. Take a deep breath in, 
and let it out. Create a little bit of a bend in your knees and try to push your butt away from the top edge of your mat with your hands. Take another deep breath. Now come forward into a plank position. Touch your chest to the floor. Push up and press back. Let's do it again. Inhale, come forward. Exhale, bend the elbows. Inhale, push up. Exhale, press back. One more time. Inhale, come forward. Exhale, chest down. Inhale, push up. Exhale, press back. Lift your left leg up. Exhale, step forward. Turn your body to the right 90 degrees. And now wedge your hands. If you want to rise up for a second, I'm just going to karate chop my left inner elbow and then bring the right arm in. That way I don't have to grab my arms to prevent the hands from falling to the floor. So go ahead and bow with your arms folded. Let your head hang. Go ahead and place those hands on the floor and walk them over to the right. Turn your feet and reach your right hand into the air. Look up at your thumb, take a deep breath. Exhale, reach down, turn your body back to the left 90, rise up into a star position. Slide the heels in, reach your hands away from your chest. So as your hips go down and back, your hands go up and back. It feels like you're trying to wrap your body around a great big globe behind you. Release, hinge forward and turn to your left foot and reach your left hand up. One more deep breath. Exhale, plant your left hand, step back, touch your chest to the floor, inhale, push up, exhale, press back. Step your feet nice and wide, press your heart back towards your feet. Big breath in, and a big breath out. Good. Lift that left leg up. And exhale, step forward. Reach your left hand into the air. Take a deep breath. Exhale, reach down. Turn to your right 90 degrees. Inhale, rise up to star. Exhale, turn your right foot out, warrior two. Inhale, reverse. Exhale, cartwheel the hands to the right foot. Step back. Touch your chest to the floor. Push up and press back. Lift your right leg up, breathe in. Exhale, step forward. Reach your right hand up, inhale. Exhale, reach down, turn left. Inhale, rise up, star. Left foot turns out, warrior two. Inhale, reverse. Left arm reaches over the right shoulder. Exhale, cartwheel your hands. Step back, touch your chest to the floor, push up and press back. Left leg lifts. Exhale, step. Left hand reaches up, exhale, turn right. Inhale, rise up, star. Exhale, warrior two, right leg bends. Inhale, reverse. Exhale, cartwheel your hands to your right foot. Step back, touch your chest to the mat, push up and press back. Right leg lifts, exhale, step. Right hand reaches up. Exhale, turn to the left 90 degrees. Inhale, rise up to star. Warrior two, exhale. Reverse, breathe in. Exhale, cartwheel your hands to your left foot. Step back, touch your chest to the mat. Push up and press back. Lift your left leg. Exhale, step forward. This is our last set. Left hand reaches up. Exhale, reach down, turn to the right. Inhale, stand up. Right foot turns out, warrior two. Inhale, reverse. Exhale, cartwheel your hands to your right foot. Step back, touch your chest to the floor, push up, press back, right leg lifts. Exhale, step through. Right hand reaches up. Exhale it down, turn to the left 90. 
Inhale, stand up star. Exhale, warrior two, left foot turns out. Reverse. Exhale, cartwheel your hands to the floor. Step back, touch your chest, push up. Press back, left leg lifts. Exhale, step. Turn your body to the right. Rise up. How you feel now? We just built up that levy a little bit. Now let's do some, let's do some poses. We're cooking with Crisco. We're baking with, with Pillsbury or something. Come into Warrior Two. Reach your hands away from your heart. Flip your palms up. Close your eyes. This is your moment of Zen. Just get all fucking centered and shit. I joke, but I'm serious. Feel your feet against the floor. Soften the back of your left knee just a little bit. Open those hands a little bit more. Think of your body right now like a petal on a flower in the sun. Just open up. Straighten your right leg. Hinge at your pelvis. That means you're trying to not only push your hips back, but tilt the pelvis and lift the left hip up. So place your left hand on your left hip right where the pocket would be on a pair of jeans, and then push your hand back. Then place your right hand on the inside of your calf. Reach your left hand into the air. On your exhale, you can slide your hand or your wrist down your calf. Fingertips getting a little closer to the floor if they're not on it yet. And who's to say how close your hand is to the floor right now? Just focus on keeping your right leg straight, but don't lock out the knee. And keep trying to shorten your left side body, drawing the left hip towards the left underarm. So the holds in yoga, I don't really think of as holds. They're just movements that slow down. I say that a lot. Slowing movement down helps us be more aware of what our body is doing. And is that aligned with what we're trying to do? Release. Rise up. And we're going to do those same two poses on the other side. Turn the right foot in, turn your left foot out. Bend your left knee and come into warrior two. Flip the palms up and close your eyes. Now in warrior two, I'm a big fan of palms up versus down and spreading the fingers instead of gluing them together. Now I like it for several reasons. Physiologically, because it laterally rotates the humerus, and it's not something that our body gets much opportunity to do. Gravity just pulls our arms down. And this rotation of the arms helps the shoulder blades come onto the back and the heart to lift, and for us to be reminded of our posture. Now, psychologically, I like it because we're turning our palms up. It means we have nothing to hide. We're not trying to dominate. In fact, we're just letting go and offering. And a palm is open to receiving too. Release. Straighten the left leg. And we want the left hip not only to go back, but we want to tilt. Tilt. If you put your hands, if you can do this, oh no, you didn't. That's what we're trying to do. This is pelvic tilt. Okay, we have to have that. And we have to have that so that we're aware that what we're trying to do is create effect uh, to affect change in the body. 
Place that left hand down near the calf. Place it on the shin if you need to. Place it on a block. Reach your right hand up. We're trying to affect change. We're also trying to increase tolerance. Tolerance to range of motion. That's what flexibility really is. If you're inflexible, it's only because you don't flex. When people tell me, I can't do yoga, I'm not flexible. I say, well, I guess you can't go to college because you don't have an education. It's where you get it, is my point. I think you probably got it. As you exhale, maybe just a little bit more contact with the floor or just bring the heart a little bit closer to the floor. And if it seems like a long time to hold a pose, ask yourself, how long did it take to watch those three episodes of Ozark the other night? Well, obviously it took me three hours, by the way. Take a nice deep inhale. And as you exhale, we're gonna take that right hand down to the left foot. And we're gonna step the left foot back and lie down on the floor. Slide your hands forward. We're gonna do cross core. Now this is a uh, variation of Salabhasana, which is like a locust pose. But we're not gonna lift arms and legs. We're going to do this in what's called a contralateral fashion, that means one arm and the opposite leg. So lift your right leg into the air, and when you lift your left hand, push into your left knee. What you want is to press down hard enough into the right hand and left knee to get your pelvic bones, your hip bones, off of the floor and your groin off the floor. And release. We're going to do the other side. Lift your left leg, push down into your right knee. Lift your right hand. And now that your right hand and left foot are off the floor, focus on pushing down into left palm and right knee. Release. Slide your hands under you. Do a push up. Press back, slowly bend those knees. Yeah. Lift your right leg up. Step forward. Reach both hands up into the air. Anjane Asana, crescent lunge. Let's switch cameras. Reach your hands up into the air. I think people tend to focus their concept of, of yoga and asana on two things. Hamstrings, got to stretch those hamstrings. Stretch those hammies and tighten that core. Tighten that core. Well, your feet get you everywhere you need to go. So lunge into your right knee. Push down into your right heel. Lift your left heel high. Press your left heel down. Lift your right heel up. Place your right heel down. Lift your left heel up. Press your left heel down, lift your right heel up. Now see if you can do that at the same time. As the right heel goes down, the left heel goes up. And as the right heel goes up, the left heel goes down. It's almost like, you know that uh, paddle board? That thing you, uh, what's that called? When you go to the lake and you get into that boat, but you have to pedal, pedal boat, something like that. Bring your hands to your heart. Lean forward over your right knee. So we want the spine to be diagonal to the earth along with that left leg, that back leg. It's gonna go back to the side cam. So turn to your right. Keep your elbow off your knee. Focus on building strength through your trunk instead of the cheat of leverage. And even using leverage, elbow against knee, to create range of motion is not a bad thing. But what we want to do is teach ourselves how our body works. It needs to be reminded. 
If you don't use it, you lose it, as they say. Take a deep breath in. And as you exhale, untwist. Place your hands on the floor and walk your hands 180 degrees with me to the left and rise up. So now we're in crescent lunge on the other side, on the other leg. Reach those hands up. Okay, I'm on side cam. I'm gonna go to the, the back cam behind me so you can see, if you're watching this now, that you can see my feet. Reach your hands up high, but bring the shoulder blades down. Tighten your core. Ugh. Lift your right heel. Press it down. Lift your left heel. Place it down, but don't straighten your left leg. Just press the heel back down. Right heel up. Lower it down. Left heel up. Place it down. Now at the same time. Right heel lifts, and as your right heel presses down, your left heel lifts. Now we're gonna use the, those pedal boats. Wouldn't that be cool if you had little pedals on your yoga mat, and you could just do this in the, in the park, you know, where everybody's riding their bike and skateboarding and rollerblading, and you were just on your mat just pedaling by? That would be the funniest fucking thing in the world. I'm gonna invent that. All right, bring your hands down to your heart. Lean forward. And I'm gonna go back to the side. Twist to your left. Thumbs touch your sternum. And what you wanna ensure is that in twisting isn't coming from the shoulders, right here. All this is shoulder movement, right? So if my thumbs lift towards my armpit or my nipple, then I'm no longer twisting at the trunk. I'm trying to gain that range of motion in the trunk at the shoulders, and it doesn't come from there. So when you bring your heart around, you got to keep those thumbs on the sternum, and then you lift that point of sternum thumb. Take a deep breath. Untwist. Place your hands on the floor. Step back. Lower your chest to the floor and slide your hands forward. Press down into your palms and just lift your legs. Point your big toes over the corners of your mat behind you and try to drag yourself off the edge of your mat with your palms and then release. Slide your hands underneath you, pull your belly and groin off the floor, push up and slowly press back and bend your knees as you press. Lift your right leg up and step it forward. Turn your body to the left 90 degrees, rise up in the star. Here we are again. Good to see you. Turn your right foot out. Okay. Catch your breath as I catch mine. Right leg straight. Nah. Let's, let's, let's approach this from, from this way. Place your right elbow on your knee or place your right hand on the floor or you can place a block next to the arch of your right foot. And then slowly straighten the right leg. If the block can slide back, you can place your hand on your shin if your hand isn't on the floor. Not only do we have different experiences in our body, we all had different breakfasts, and even that comes into effect at any given moment. We all also have maybe the same basic shape, two legs, two eyes, that sort of thing. But our morphology means that my tibias might be longer or shorter than yours. So, point being, you don't feel like you're doing it wrong if your hand isn't on the floor, okay? Place your left hand on the side of your head, sliding the thumb right over the ear. And turn your chest to the wall. As you bend your left knee and pull your butt back 
lift your left elbow. So what we're trying to do is look wherever the right toes are pointing. Left elbow lifts away from the left hip and the groin goes back and I get the best chiropractic adjustment every time I do this. Feels so good. And then release, bend the right knee, place your left hand on your low back, reach your right hand into the air, reverse, lower your left shoulder. So if you still have that screen, whatever you're watching in front of this long edge, then make sure you're still uh, facing me, chest and eyes, and not turning them up to the ceiling. Don't turn it into a back bend, in other words. We're going for lateral flexion. That's bending sideways. Release. Turn the right toes in. Turn the left toes out. Hinge forward and either place your elbow on your knee. Remember, this is a great place to be, so I'm gonna just stay here and talk for a second. But if you've got your hand on the floor, hand on a block, that's great too. So as I was talking about morphology, it means that everybody's gonna squat different based on the length of their femurs, their tibia, and the shape of their hip, and whether you're a man or a woman, whether or not you're a teenager whose body is going havoc, just trying to grow through that growth spurt, everything comes into play. And that's why at, at no age, no shape, no weight, do we wanna judge ourselves. We just wanna recognize that when the levy breaks, that's this. I'll have no place to stay. Now, wherever your left hand is, it's great. Straighten your left leg as best you can. When I say straight, always add an ER and just go for straighter than whatever you got, but not to the point of hyperextension, you bendy flexi girls. Right hand on the side of the head. And as I bend the right knee, I'm going to lift the right elbow away from my knee. Uh, my eyes are stacked. That means I'm looking at the world sideways. I'm not trying to push my head into my hand. I'm actively trying to lift my right elbow away from my hip. The groin goes back. Release, bend the left knee again. Right hand on your hip, left hand to the sky. Lower your right shoulder. My left thumb is just reaching away from my left shoulder. It's not actively itself trying to reach for the wall behind me. In other words, you're, there should be space between your bicep and your cheek. Take a deep breath in, exhale. Cartwheel your hands to your left foot. Step back and bring your chest all the way to the floor. Slide your hands forward. That back is getting stronger every day, every breath, every practice. All right, keep your feet on the floor. Keep your knees on the floor. And by the way, if you pointed your toes behind you and you're on the top of your feet, let's uh, curl those toes back under, please. And then lift your arms and then just pull your armpits away from the floor. Don't try to lift your hands higher. Try to lift your armpits higher with hands off the floor. Make sure you're breathing and release. Nicely done, gang. Slide your hands underneath. My thumbnails are under my nipples and uh, I'm not taking any advantage, just so you know. Lift your groin your butt and push and as you press those knees bend it's like you're trying to push your butt to the wall behind your heels not to the ceiling just take your time as we begin to back bend deeper we come out slower so think of deep like deep underwater the deeper you would go underwater the slower you would come back up to the surface 
Lift your right leg and step forward. Grab your yoga block if you have it, and I'll show you what to do if you don't. But we're just going to straighten the right leg. And if you don't have a block, you just stack your hands on your shin right under your knee. And if you do have a block, you can hold the block behind your right heel and hold it down with your fingertips. And the point being is that what we want is for the back to come neutral, not flat because your spine isn't flat to begin with. Neutral means it's natural. So we're trying to pull the collarbones forward and driving through the ball of my right foot and the right heel, I'm trying to push my right hip back and lift my right glute up. Now I want you to focus right now on whether or not it feels like your heart is drifting to the right. And then try to pull right collarbone away from right hip and go over heart over the short edge of your mat. And if you want to go deeper, don't bow your chest and head to your right leg. Bend your left knee. That'll change the angle of your right hip and still keep your spine straighter. Release, guys. You can carry that block with you. We're going to take a path 180 to the left and do that same single pose on the other side. So again, if you don't have the block, stack the hands on the shin. You can always hold on to a chair or the, the coffee table if you need to. If you have a yoga block, and if you don't, um, order one, but not now. It's not essential, okay? Wait, and let those Amazon workers or whatever send out important shit. Well, one of these days, when things get normal again, buy a yoga block for God's sakes. All right? All right, enough. Now, straighter. And when you push into your left leg, are you uh, leaning to the left uh, for your left hip to try to escape that tension? So we want to push left hip back and pull the collarbones forward. A little bit more length in the back of the neck. So don't try to use your chin to bring your heart forward. That never works. Bend your right knee if you want to go deeper into that left back line. Take one more deep breath and release. Slide the block to the side. Step back, lie down on your belly. Even though that's not what I'm doing, I'm cheating. I'm going to go over to Mufasa and grab the towel here because you should also, when you're practicing, you should have a towel nearby. One, because you might be sweaty. And two, because we all learned when we were nerds reading The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy that a towel is the most important thing in the universe, the most useful thing. So when you bend your knees, if you can't grab your feet, you're still a great person, okay? What you can do is take a towel and you can lasso. I'm doing a really bad job of this, by the way. You can lasso, there we go, your feet. And then you just walk your hands to the center of the towel, closer to your feet, and voila! So use a towel to bridge the distance between your hands and your feet if they will not connect. Please do not take your knees off the floor. Keep your knees on the floor and try to pull your toes to the floor. That's your feet in dorsiflexion. And now I just want you to try to take the balls of your feet and place them on the wall behind you. So we're not kicking up. And your back is not bending very much, right? but we're using the anterior of our body to pull a back bend into a higher part of the spine. And you can release that. Place your hands under your shoulders. Remember, take your junk off the floor. 
Don't leave your junk on the floor. Get it up and then do a push up. As you slowly press, bend your knees. My mat is great. I got this mat from Big Raven. Big Raven yoga mat, shout out. I was not paid for this endorsement. But I should have been because my Audrey Hepburn mat is, is essential. No, it's not. I'm, nothing is essential other than breath and love. But as I just hold the pose and breathe, it's, it's a problem because I'm just looking right at Audrey Hepburn's lips, man. I've got to stay on track. I don't need this right now. Lift your right leg up. Step forward. Turn your body to the left 90 degrees. Rise up. Oh, yoga is so awesome, guys. Now let's see where we can take this last open hip cluster. Turn your right foot out. Bend your right knee. Just take a second to breathe. I refuse. If everyone stops watching, nobody wants to practice yoga with me, but I refuse to think that I can't just pause. That's the whole point of this practice when we want it to be efficient, right? But people are like, no, I got 20 minutes, man. What do you got? I got 20 minutes. But the other 40 minutes of that hour, people are just on fucking TikTok or Instagram or doing whatever, right? Just breathe, man. Remind yourself that you've got time. This is one of the biggest lessons of this whole stay at home thing. There's a lot of time, but where does it go? All right, let's do it, all right? I'll shut up. Straighten your right leg, tilt your pelvis, and place your hand on the floor or on a block, right? We're back here where we were. This is triangle pose or any variation of it. We can do a lot of different things here if I get loosey-goosey. And why can't you, right? Your body articulates. Nobody bursts into flames because of any type of yoga misalignment. All right, now, if you wish, you can place your hand on the floor. I'm gonna give you a lot of options right here. Maybe you wanna place your elbow on your knee even and just reach your left hand over. This is a classic pose. So maybe that's where you are today. Now, if you want to, you could take your right hand and place it on your low back, right on your kidney, and you could place your elbow on the inside of your knee. And what this is doing is improving medial rotation of the humerus. It's a stretch in the shoulder, in the rotator, in the subscap. Actually, not subscap, but point being is maybe you can place your hand on your kidney and your elbow on your inside of your knee. And this is great training for binding. And maybe that is what you want to do. So you could reach your right arm underneath your right leg. Reach your right hand up your right hip. Grab your right hand with your left. And maybe straighten your legs. It's not important what you get to, where you get to, where this, this path or trail that you're hiking on ends for you. You get to decide. Especially at home. All that fucking pressure is off, man, of being in the yoga studio. And it's like, oh, what's she doing? I could do that. I could fucking lift my left leg. Right? Be where you want to be today. Release. Take your time. There's no dogma around coming up. You just come up with awareness. Turn your right foot in. Turn your left foot out. You can bust that warrior two, elbow to knee, extended side angle. You know where you were on the first side. You know how, about how much time we have. 
because I could fucking talk, right? But I'm not doing this to indulge my uh, thought process on, on unwilling ears. It's just we have that time. I am going to, with some reluctance, create some like 20 minute flows. I've been asked for that a lot. But I do want to scold you guys a little bit. I do. We have to convince ourselves. We have to remind ourselves to enjoy time. And not just fill it up with Netflix or work, or too much pursuit of anything. Sex, money, love, sugar, video games. When the levee breaks, we'll have no place to stay. Bind if you like. And remember, if you're working, if, you, if this thing keeps eluding you, if it's eluded you for years or you're new to the practice and you want to get into that, hand on your kidney, elbow on your knee. This is a great place to start. This is called a chicken wing. And you can always work on creating a little bit more ability through the, the scap and the mobility to medially rotate that left arm. That's really key. Take one more deep breath wherever you are and be happy wherever you are. Take a moment to be thankful for your body and everything it's giving you and teaching you because your body thanks you for giving it. Turn your left foot in, hinge forward. And we're gonna walk those feet out, feet to the short edges of the mat. They don't have to get there. And they don't have to stop there, okay? But a good rule of thumb is you should still be able to keep the outer edge of your feet on the floor. You should be still be able to press your knees forward and pull your groin back. Palms are flat on the floor. Arms are acting as two pillars for the cathedral of the chest. Oh man, just sometimes just beautiful shit just flows right out of my mouth. It's awesome. The cathedral of the chest. Yeah. Now let's slowly bring toes in, heels in, toes in, heels in. Toes and heels in. That's my good friend from Scandinavia. Toes and heels in. Now walk your hands over to your right and bend your right knee. Push it through your forearm. Sit to your heel. Point your left toes up. And you can lower your heart here and draw the right knee out. Remember when your heart gets closer to your knee or below your knee, that's a good indication of how much mobility you're creating in the acetabulum. That's your hip socket. And then lift your butt. We're gonna go to the other side. Walk your hands left. Push your left knee between your arms and you can always draw the knee out and bring the hand in. You can even use your left arm as a little bit of leverage for that left knee to hold it out, and the hands can step wide and bow the heart. And now we're gonna lift the butt, walk the hands over to the right foot and lower the left knee down. Toe heel your right foot left, we're coming into pigeon. Place your right knee on the floor next to your right hand. Bring your elbows down. I want to give you guys a few options here based on whether or not you just need to relax and rest and let the, uh, the, the silence and the, the passive stretch sort of dictate your, your speed. So even if we go further, we can take a moment here just to appreciate the pause. The pause button.
Now, if you want to feel a more active stretch in your uh, resting pigeon, which I guess is not a resting pigeon anymore, is it? Then place the top of your left foot on the floor and just press down and lift your knee. And then press down into the right shin. You can pulsate that too. You can just relax and let the left knee come down and for the right shin to relax. And then you can just push down and relax. Every time we engage in an active stretch and then release it, we're helping to reset these muscle spindle receptors, these little circuit breakers in our muscles. As you bend your left knee and your left foot comes into the air, drag your left knee an inch forward, literally an inch forward. And that'll take the pressure off your kneecap as you reach back to grab the left foot with the right hand. Draw your heel towards your tailbone. You may not still be on this left elbow. It may have been pretty difficult to grab that foot and you ha might have to come onto the hand. And remember, mobility, it's not, a, it's not a judgment. You're a good person no matter what your weight is, no matter what your mobility is. And if you can't reach back and grab this foot, lasso it. Okay? Where was I? Release. We're going to plant the hands, pop onto the right foot, and turn to the other side. Lower the right knee down, and bring your left foot in, and lower the left knee down. And then bring yourself into your most restful position here for a moment. Throughout the years, as I've trained other people to, to teach yoga, I've, I've really been on them about the words that they use, the exact verbiage that they use to describe something. And my point is, is that I always try to use words like lower or lift instead of like drop. And I know that seems like a, being a real stickler, but if you drop a glass, it breaks. And if you place a glass down, it doesn't. So what we're just trying to do in our yoga practice is be aware and choose to control. In my mind's eye, I often imagine just all of the inner workings of my body, not as an organic human body, but just as levers and wheels and buttons I'm passionate about the body. And if you want to go further, point your right toes, press down into the top of your right foot, press into your left shin. And I apologize if, if you've heard this before from me as well, but imagine if you were, you were 18 and, and they gave you a brand new car and that was your car for life. You'd take pretty good care of it. Let's come up onto the hands and bend the right knee. And when the foot comes off the floor, drag your knee forward and take the pressure off your kneecap. If there's a lot of discomfort in your knee when it's bearing weight, we have to take it off. And as soon as we bring the, the weight to the femur, the body's longest, strongest bone, we're not, we don't have that pressure on that patella tendon. Reach back and grab your right foot with your left hand. Lasso it if you need to. And bring that right elbow down if you can, because that means we're bringing our spine out of this back bendy twist and when I come down, it's a little bit more neutral and 
it twists best from neutral. Release. Place your hands on the floor and push back into one more down dog or crouching cat. Bring your knees down to the mat. And we're gonna turn to the long edge of the mat to the right, place our butt on the back edge, the long back edge, and bring your feet together for a moment. So now we're sitting for the first time in our practice. So let's take a moment just to ground the sitting bones. We've got a really simple conclusion to our practice today. Lift your right knee and plant your right foot. Capture your right knee with your left inner elbow. Place the fingertips of your right hand behind you. And before we twist, get tall. Lift the heart. And then I'm gonna try to bring my hand to my chest and that means my right, uh, left bicep is firing more. It's really squeezing my right knee into trying to pull it under my left armpit. Tighten the belly to the spine. Lift the collarbones away from the floor. Push both sitting bones into the floor. And then turn. Release. Let's do the other side. Plant the left foot. Right foot to left hip. Capture the knee on the inside of the elbow. And if I was to remove the knee, this is literally what I'm doing. It looks like a, a, a bodybuilder showing you the, the bicep, doing a big old pose. So capture that knee and pull it in. Fingertips behind you, thumb points at your butt crack. Tighten your belly, lift your collarbones. Pull your left knee towards your right ribs. Keep getting taller. We're pulling in circumferentially from all sides and then expanding from top to bottom. Sitting bones press down, collarbones and the crown of the head rise. Release. Now, if you prefer, you can turn your body to align with the mat and lie down in the Shavasana. And if you'd rather meditate, then just bring your legs into a Sukhasana position. If your knees won't rest on the floor, you can slide a block or a pillow or even a couple of pillows under your butt. If the hips elevate, then the hips can relax a little bit. Place your palms on your knees. Sit up straight and close your eyes. And if you're reclined in Shavasana, relax your jaw without your mouth falling open. Pay attention to your breath without feeling the need to change it. Like you're listening intently to a friend speaking to you without feeling the need to interrupt or direct the conversation. However often we pause and just think about what we're grateful for, it's not often enough. Every practice, since it is about mindfulness, should be about drawing the heart to gratitude. And it's easy to feel grateful for money in the bank and the love of important others. It's a much more difficult thing to be grateful for challenge and heartbreak and difficulty and pain. But since these are aspects of life that are 
inevitable. We should try to reframe our thoughts around the lessons we gain from our pain. When we practice, we not only make our bodies stronger and more resilient, but we do so with the heart and the spirit. And I hope this practice has strengthened you. Thanks for being here today, guys. Namaste.